What's up, YouTube? Capital G here, letting you guys know what the heck happened at YCS Denver. And this was one of the strangest events of recent memory. And I say that because the highs of the event were so high. There were so many amazing tech cards that we got to see. Some of them had not been played. Kind of, it felt like, in years. And when Future Fusion got activated in the finals, I lost my fucking mind. I was like, holy shit, it is, it's been years since I've seen Future Fusion. Basically, five years since the card has been viable in the competitive meta but the lows of the event were so low in fact the entire day two was just it was so murky and it was so just shrouded in the i guess scrutiny of people doing illegal plays people stacking are they not stacking they're still kind of cheating the game state's getting ruined and i guess i'll talk about everything all right so for starters, this is your winner right here, Anderson Singh. He won with Infernoids, and uh, that definitely feels pretty good. Infernoids obviously are a very strong deck. It proves that 60-card decks are still extremely popular in the meta, and I don't really think that the top 32 taught us a whole lot. In fact, if you look at the top 32, you see that there are, you know, Zodiac is still the most popular deck. I think that we learned a little more about Metaphos, and it's kind of odd that Metaphos' popularity would increase when they lose Kirin, or arguably the strongest card in the deck and I don't want to hear that oh they got bio baboon because bio baboon was legal before the ban list so I don't really understand why metaphors got so much better obviously metaphors have always excelled at having an extremely good grind uh, game uh, much like paleozoic but speaking of paleozoic something is just weird with that deck in North America I don't know what it is but the deck basically wins back-to-back -back YCSs, and then you turn around and it can't even top eight of oh, the next YCS. Like, what the hell is going on with Paleozoic? A lot of people are saying that it's kind of just a North American versus uh, a European thing where the Europeans love the Paleozoic deck a lot more. They're more committed to it. They know how to play it better than we do over here in North America, guys. And maybe that's just the truth. If you look at the top eight, Paleozoics didn't even make it. And again, it went back-to-back -back YCSs, so that's just strange. I mean... It was well behind Metaphos and behind Infernoids as well. Now, the thing about this is, if you look at this top eight breakdown, uh, half of the top decks are Zodiac here. And I believe, I'm not 100% sure, but I've seen one of these Metaphos. I believe that every single deck in the top eight ran a uh, Zodiac rap here. I know that there were some Metaphos builds that only ran like a minimum zoo build in the main deck. Like, you know, they have to make room for the Bio Baboons and stuff. And the only thing I assume you really took out of the deck was Kirin. So a lot of them were just, or I guess not a lot, but some of them were only running like Double Rat and like one copy of Whiptail as a Broad Bull target so not really like a super big engine but still enough to make explosive plays turn one uh, enough to basically get you to Dryden, which is still a very strong power card and i don't know it just felt kind of um the event and the top cut felt it felt very much the same uh, from last format, but it still felt very new because of all the amazing tech. For starters, I was actually surprised to not only see Lunar Light Black Sheep and a whole bunch of decks, but the fact that people are running double Fusion Substitute. I thought that Black Sheep was going to become kind of the norm after the deck did lose a, a copy of Rat, and I don't just mean the deck Zodiac. I mean basically anyone who is you know playing like the Zodiac engine. I expected people to move to to the black sheep but i didn't expect people to play double fusion substitute and i think that a lot of people just kind of realized that you know more of a good thing i guess is a good thing it allows you to draw potentially two cards and i think i saw somebody even summon norden three times in one turn which is kind of disgusting you fusion substitute for norden once you put it back in your extra deck you draw a card fusion substitute for it again put it back draw a card and then you instant fusion draw again it's just like there's so much drawing with that gusto emerald and uh, being able to use norden over and over over and over again there was actually a lot of crazy tech cards that i noticed um probably the biggest one would be the coming out party for retaliating c i think that there was a mad dash for people to try and find like awesome uh, hand traps to find cards that go second or to find cards that are still very powerful uh, when going second retaliating c is really good because it stops like the brilliant fusion plays it can definitely hurt if your opponent activates like instant fusion or if they activate fusion substitute because not only will those cards go to the banished pile but then a lot of times they'll lose their ability to go norden the uh, fusion substitute will get banished so they won't be able to draw that card and if you can get them to banish their norden then they may be sitting on a whole bunch of instant fusions that are completely dead because they don't have any targets in addition retaliating c not only searches maxi but it is a level four so if you already used your um 
your maxi earlier in the duel you can use this as a pretty decent xc target it doesn't have the greatest stat line in the world but you know you can use this as an xc for like rank four it's just about every deck in Yu-Gi-Oh runs rank four you also had a lot of people running dd crow dd crow is kind of used for some of the same reasons really good at just getting rid of cards like metaphors fusion which uh retaliating c also gets rid of and i believe people are still only running like one copy of metaphors fusion so once fusion is gone uh, metaphors are in a very tough time it, they have a tough time winning it's not like they can just kind of outgrind with Karen and bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. They don't have that option anymore. DD Crow is also probably better in the Infernoid matchup as it can hit cards like Fairy Tale Snow. It can hit the big Infernoid so they can't summon them back from the graveyard. Just an all around good card. We saw a lot of tech coming out of the Zodiac deck, not just the second fusion substitute, but a lot of people, or I saw some, I saw a guy actually in top eight who was playing, uh, he was playing Trick Clown, Performance Trick Clown, which was kind of interesting. Obviously that goes with the whole brilliant fusion engine. And I don't know, it just seems like fusion right now is a gateway to exceed. <laughs> it seems like everybody is playing the fusion cheat cards, cards like fusion substitute and instant fusion and brilliant fusion. And they're kind of just a gateway to go into like more exceed plays. I I also heard at this event that Dimensional Barrier wasn't as popular as Solemn Strike, which is super surprising, and I think it might be that we're coming full circle where people are so afraid to Twin Twister or to blind twin twister because they don't want you to chain that d barrier that i think people are finding themselves more susceptible to solemns people are more willing to try and pendulum summon into back row because they think oh it's just a d barrier back there and then you strike them and you can obviously capitalize we saw storm coming out of the uh, uh of the metaphors deck and that card is very powerful if you guys don't know what storm is i'll look it up right quick basically you um destroy I, actually i shouldn't have typed in storm so many cards are gonna come up this is so unprofessional so storm is basically a spell um it was used in cleave for back in the day and you destroy as many spells and traps on your side of the field as possible and then you destroy the same amount on your opponent's side of the field people used to use it with cleave for because they could destroy their skills or more importantly they could destroy their sacrifices that were set and they would still be able to search and it would basically count as like a heavy storm against their opponent but in metaphors you can kind of do the same thing with your metaphors cards they're not really that important Important. your scales are really not that big of a deal either because you seem just can all you always seemingly can get to more of those so storm was a really good card used and metaphors over the weekend i want to see if it actually continues and i don't know i thought the tech was actually very refreshing especially future fusion coming out of infernoids and the greatest thing about future fusion is it still feels like it has the same power that it did in 2012 or that it did in 2006 when Chaos Dragons were using it during the Zexo era. It was basically like an auto win card, very similar to card destruction and Dark World. Um, in 2006, people were using it with the Cameratech uh, Fortress Dragon or Cameratech Overdragon, excuse me, OTK, and that deck actually won a YCS or a Shonen Jump in Florida. And it really feels like Future Fusion has the same power level of do not fucking let that card resolve because if you let it resolve, right now not only will somebody get an infernoid tiara which already is a problem itself but then they get to drop like eight infernoids in the graveyard and you're just not going to recover at that point because not only is tiara a card that can mill more cards but then when she dies she counts as another infernoid in the graveyard so you can even send i believe all your tiaras at once based off of her effects so future fusion is still a ridiculously powerful card and um if you chain D barrier to it, they will not get the Tierra, but they still will actually dump. So that's something that everybody learned at the event. Like, do not let Future Fusion resolve. Then I got to talk about day two, guys, and the sloppy mess that it was. There were so many illegal plays. There were so many just things that left a bad taste in your mouth. And honestly, I think it kind of killed the sanctity of this event. There were people who were stacking, attempting to stack. And look, I'm just going to play it. I'll, I'll go ahead and mute it. These are slow. This, this is slowed down. You see right here, David Lopez, top 32. He has come out on Facebook on Zodiac and basically said that, you know, hey, I wasn't doing it. I wasn't trying to stack guys. It looks shady, but come on, guys. You have to use your own brains. This guy is resolving a Cosmo 10 can effect. He dumps his Dark Destroyer. You see him clearly stop on Imperial Order. Why would you do that for starters? And uh, he takes Imperial Order and moves it to the top of his deck. Okay, he gets his Forerunner. That's fine. Takes Anti-Spell Fragrance, moves it to the top of his deck. Why are you doing that? This card has nothing to do with Floodgates. You're not supposed to be taking those cards and moving them anywhere. You're just supposed to be dumping Cosmo cards on the field for your opponent to select one to give to you and then the rest go to the graveyard. Like, why are you moving Floodgates? And he was playing against Pendulums. Obviously, Imperial Order and Anti-Spell Fragrance are like auto win cards against the deck. It seems like, I don't know, you know, he won to make sure that he had a good chance of getting those cards because they were kind of auto win 
He also, after resolving the tin can, does not present the deck to his opponent for a final cut. A lot of people are saying that that's his opponent's fault. Actually, you would be 100% wrong. Um, this was actually told to me by Glasgow. You see right there, he sets his deck down, and then he's going to actually resolve the effect. This is not only stacking. This is an illegal play, and it doesn't even matter to me if the stacking like didn't work. Like That's not the point. The point is you still stacked, man. I, I, he can say that he wasn't cheating, but how many people come out and say that they're cheating? This is the actual official tournament policy after the deck is thoroughly randomized aka shuffled uh, it must be presented to the opponent that means it is not optional after you go through your deck if you search something or if you resolve some type of weird effect like parasite parasite or something like that if you look in your deck you have to actually present it to your opponent then your opponent gets to decide i will not cut your deck yes i will cut your deck etc etc if you do not give your opponent the option to cut your deck you have just ruined the game state and uh, i mean you can get a game warning from that you also had in the top eight um, the double battle phase right here. I talked about this yesterday of the retaliating C attempting to attack the uh, the Zodiac Dryden's obviously he pops it He gives him the max C in the very same turn You see this guy who is actually pendulum summoned. He was the one playing storm by the way It was so good by the way and you see right here He is once again swinging for games same exact turn and it just it completely ruined this match because not only does he win off of this imaginary second battle phase where he gets the otk this guy but he was under maxi why he did this so not only could he not end the game but he was giving the guy a bunch of cards why he wasn't able to end the game and i mean this guy would have had like six cards to try and counter i mean is it that difficult to kill one cyber dragon infinity maybe you bait it with a zodiac barrage and then you dark hole and fucking just come back and like otk them so you know what i mean and then we actually had it in the finals this was the one i didn't actually know about this one is kind of odd, and it's Anderson saying, now the thing is, this is the one where I'm not 100% sure if he did actually try and stack. I don't, I don't want to say that he did stack. It just, to me, it looks kind of shady, and I know at least he messed up the game state, and it is an illegal play because he goes in his deck, he searches, he looks to his deck, and he does not present it to his opponent for final cut. Now, what you're going to see him do is, you see right here, he has his thumb on Fairy Tail Snow. He's going to actually search, because he's searching for Broad Bull. He's going to search this Zodiac Whiptail, and keep in mind, Fairy Tail Snow is the card he stops on with his thumb there. So you see, he's going to take the, he's going to go back through again. He's going to search the Whip Tail. Still has his thumb on on Fairy Tail Snow. Now he's going to go back. He's going to randomize, or you know, a lot of people say that when you're you're basically stacking your deck, like you make sure you stack the card to the top or the bottom, and then you make sure like you don't move that card. And again, it's perfectly fine if you want to try and stack, but you have to present the deck to, <laughs> to your opponent so that they can cut, so that they can basically unstack your deck. And you know, there used to be times during like the um. He's going to go back into his deck. That's why I haven't said anything. There, there were times during like the deck rise format where you would go through your deck, you would search, and then you wouldn't immediately present it to your opponent. That's perfectly fine because decks like Zoo, decks like Neck Rise that go into their deck multiple times, sometimes, you know, I'd be like, hey, are you going back in? And he'd be like, yeah, I think I'm going back in. So you see, he is done searching. He has not presented his deck to his opponent, which means whether he stacked or not is irrelevant. The game state's already been fucked up. And uh, I believe he's going to go into Bujin Kagasuchi, which obviously has a milling effect. That's when you have to give your your debt to your opponent if you're going to draw cards off the top or if you're going to mill cards because no one knows if you're stacking or not. You know what I mean? Just eliminate all of that questioning by following the fucking rules. So, you know, he does end up going to Bujin Kagasuchi. And again, keep in mind the card that he stopped on was Fairy Tail Snow. So if he did stack a card, it would probably be Fairy Tail Snow. And what is the very first card that he is going to mill? Oh, would you look at that? It's Fairy Tail Fucking Snow. So <laughs> I can't say that this was definitive proof that he stacked. I think that he was going to win this game either way because he seemed not only to be the better player, but he dominated in game one thanks to Future Fusion. And it looked like he did. He never, I don't think he ever actually needed to um i don't think he even needed to no 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 he did actually use the snow to win but he, he didn't need it like he had so much advantage but i don't know guys that's kind of suspect but he did at least ruin the game state by not giving his opponent the um by not giving his opponent the deck to actually shuffle so i don't know when i think about ycs denver i think of a really weird event of an event that i really don't want to spend too much time thinking about because there were very very highs of or very very high highs of this event man high high in denver that's kind of ironic saying that again marijuana being legal in uh, colorado but um 
the lows of this event was just all of this sketchy shit that happened during day two double battle phases guy basically stacking imperial order and anti-spell fragrance when he's supposed to be resolving a tin can like what is that so you guys let me know i do love the fact that there were a lot of amazing and interesting tech cards to come out of this event because even though we kind of had the same stale deck it felt like they got kind of a refreshing and I don't know. I wish that I didn't have to use Luna Light Black Sheep as the thumbnail of this video, but I've really, really been wanting to get her in one of these uh, What Happened, uh, or I guess I've been willing, I've been wanting to get her in a thumbnail, and it kind of just seems appropriate now that people are playing like double fusion substitutes. So anyways, I'm rambling at this point, guys. Thank you guys for watching, as always. Let me know in the comment sections, how did you guys feel about Denver? It was, it was a fucking strange event, and uh, thank you guys for watching, as always. Subscribe if you have not already.